today was one of those days when I had a big lunch. So for dinner, I wanted to eat something like something vegetarian. You can taste the lentils a lot. Exactly. The sambar is our sambar. Ah. It's not as spicy as the Tamil sambar. It is not as sweet as the Bangalore sambar. That is what we are famous for. The rasam vada. Our chili cheese toast is very famous. That's a busy bale bar. Yes. What about? We are the first people to start this multi cuisine concept in Chennai. In Chennai. Well, look at this. Where will you find this? A kire dose, rubbing shoulders with a penne arabiata, and followed closely by the fried rice. This is a dose that has a lot of ghee. You said this is a light dose, but you can certainly taste. No, no. Maybe for Kripalana, they little more love they have put. The fingers do all the talking. <laughs> it's a light dose, but there's plenty of tuppa. After all, it's a tuppa dose. Tuppa dose. This is the old structure okay. of where Udupi Om Matsya was born, and uh, we are trying to restore it back to its old glory. So this is hundred years old. Yeah, it must be beyond that. So, so who began Matsya? My granddad had come, huh. but my uncle made it as a business venture. So your granddad came from where? From Udupi. So your roots still go back. Yeah, exactly, Udupi. exactly. We are still Udupi by heart. <laughs> Udupi by heart. Fantastic. Well, we are not in Udupi. We are in Chennai. We are at Egmore, where I've met Mr. Ram Bhat. Of Matsya, you're the fourth generation. Yeah. So when I asked people where should I be eating in Chennai, they said you should definitely visit Matsya restaurant. And it so happened that we've arrived here and they're in the midst of a renovation. And this is a hundred-year-old building that they're hoping to restore back to its former glory. Former glory, yes. Okay. And we are trying to make it look as authentic and original as possible. Fantastic. So when will this be ready? Another one month. All right. So I guess when you visit Matsya Egmore, I guess this will already be ready. Well, today was one of those days when I had a big lunch. So for dinner, I wanted to eat something light, something vegetarian. And that's when I remembered the Matsya recommendation. So that's where we are. We are at Matsya Egmore to savor some of the tiffin treats that they have on offer. So tell me, what's with the name Matsya? We are Madhwas. We are from Udupi. We Correct. are followers of Madhwacharya. Huh. And our Kuladevam, it's a Matsya Shaligram. So oh, okay. we pray to it and uh, it is the first thing and again in the Dasa Avataram, the Matsya Avatar is the first avatar of, uh, of Vishnu. Vishnu. The hotel is called Udupi Home. Udupi Home. Yeah. So the restaurant is called Matsya. Well, it's always a happy sign when you walk into a restaurant and you find every table taken. So when did this place open, you said? As Matsya, 1980. Before that, it was Udupi Home since independence. And before that, it was Udupi Sri Krishna Bhavan. During the emergency, we closed because they told we have to give a meal at one rupee. You couldn't afford it. We were the first hotel to close as a sign of protest. Only then MTR closed in Bangalore. Correct. And, then and they started, it spun off into... It spun off into a different business yeah, altogether. Yeah. Because they didn't have lodging. We had lodging, so we could sustain it. It's always nice to spot what people are eating. How's the rasam vada? Very good. This rasam reminds me of uh, saru of uh, Peli saru. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's on those same lines. So this is our kitchen. This is the, where we dispense the chutney sambar huh. and uh, this is where they put the idli. So this idli is Tamil the, Nadu style idli? No, no, no. This is our idli. With akitari? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the rice rava? With the rice rava. The sambar is our sambar. Ah. It's not as spicy as the Tamil sambar. It is not as sweet as the Bangalore sambar. Somewhere in between. In between. We were the first people to create a Jain Sambar. No onions, no garlic. And this is a Sambar that you serve everybody? Everybody. So what do you think of noodles? Some drumstick corners? We put drumstick, we put cabbage. Because when the cabbage gets cooked, it ah. has the same consistency as an onion. Ah. So that kind of becomes, so lends a little thickness. Thickness to it. And of course you have your dal. I can smell the aroma of the garam masala, of the masala yeah, that you masala, have. Masala, not the garam, but it's a masala. The masala, led largely by the coriander. 
is definitely a sambar where you can taste the lentils a lot exactly but not as much as let's say a typical tamil nadu sambar no. where there's a lot more lentils lot thicker it's a lot thicker and uh, there are variations of tamil sambar where they overload with even uh, garlic so in each area there's a different kind of sambar this sambar has a certain creaminess to it and i can feel the weight of the lentils coat my tongue there's a bit of a sourness that comes from some tomatoes yeah is a tamarind that goes tamarind in? is there but the to tomato gives the sourness and the sweetness is very uh, very minimal very, very minimal you you can't even find it in fact the sweetness is almost cancelled out by the sourness of the tomato yeah, exactly mm. but that is what we are famous for well that's something that i'm looking forward to tasting the rasam vada Is it no? This gyros dosa. That's the onion rava. Onion rava. Wonderful. So we have pastas going in. But kids, you know it's a multi cuisine. Onion, tapam, onion tapam, tapam, tapam. Today everybody wants everything. In Chennai you cannot survive with just two dishes. So whether it's a paratha, whether it's onion tapam, or yeah, yeah, fried rice. Fried rice. rice. What is that? A herbal dosa. Herbal dosa. We have a asa dosa. What is asa dosa? So this has a different chutney. Okay. We have ginger, jaggery, and chili paste okay. on the dosa, and uh, we also make our own breads. Okay. So our chili cheese toast is very famous. That's a busy bale bath. Yes. So this kind of reminds me of a place that you would find in Udupi, Mangalore. Yes, yes. What yes. about? We are the first people to start this multi cuisine concept in Chennai. In Chennai, I grew up eating chana butter. <laughs> well, look at this. Where will you find this? A kirei dosa, rubbing shoulders with a penne arabiata, and followed closely by the fried rice okay. and some other than badamala. Badamal. Badamal and some coffee. Coffee. Well, this certainly seems to be an eclectic combination of dishes that are trooping out of the kitchen here at Matsya Egg Mart. bread piece masala like this a, is bread uh, and this piece masala in the center oh piece masala yeah and that's buttered bread yeah buttered bread golconda biryani well there's a lot happening here at batsia i'm hoping to go to the table and find myself something simple simple to savor This is my brother Prasanna. Okay, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the vegetarian restaurants actually, whenever you go in the country, you will find there's a Udupi connection. That was called train number one, 1920s, 30s, and all that. Uh. So all the Udupi people, either they went off to Bombay, uh. or they, they came like this. My mother's side, they set up hotels in Salem. Udupi Shivali gang here were uh, basically into two things. One is hotels, another is doctors. So this is what the old menu. Yeah, is this old? is when we started the Udupi type Udupi of food. food because those days it was not that. This is came in about 1985. This goes back to the 80s. Ah, 1985. 85. This, this menu. Fantastic. This is the present menu. So I think from the present menu, I'm definitely going to do the rasam vada. Then we'll do a dosa. Either the asa dosa or the gyros dosa. It's a classic one. Ah. So this is a rasam vada. I can smell the aroma of that uh, masala. We uh, make the rasam. Mm. We add little bit of ghee. Finally, we have some magic potion. That's the masala which we grind and put it. Is that, that a similar masala that goes into the sambar because the aroma is very similar? Similar, but uh, this is a coriander, little bit more, yeah. and we do it so that it blends well with the rasam. The brothers have insisted that I make a beginning with the rasam vada, and I also got some good uh, reviews on the rasam vada from the customer sitting here. Thank you. And, and also in the little research that I had done. I was told that the regulars here don't even leave. Actually, don't even begin ordering the dishes without the rasam vada. So this is also a rasam that is fairly light. So it quite reminds me of a teli saru. But what I feel is that in this, your masala is a little more potent. The vada has a taste, so it absorbs that. So that's why we have to balance it. If you put the teli sar, then it becomes more lighter. That's right. So basically, you want the rasam to have a little more weight, a little more flavor, flavor. a little more punch. 
so as to be able to be countered by, by, the, by the by thing the of Udinavada. the Udinavada. I also like this pulpy bits of the tomato that I'm biting into. That tomato has also soaked up the rasam. So the moment you place that in your mouth, from within the very mushy texture of the tomato spews that flavorful gush of the rasam. I can feel the warmth of the pepper. Pepper is the game changer. Ah, I think you also do a little bit of a garnish of a pepper on the top. We call it a magic mix. So that's the name. The pepper and the coriander, perhaps a few other things as well, but that's what I see out here. You know, I just need to rest my spoon on that vade and that vade cuts automatically. So this vade has been soaking quite indulgently in that rasam. In rasa. How long has it been sitting in that rasam? About two hours. So I think the function of the spoon here is not to cut into the vade, but to merely scoop that vade along with a bit of the rasam into your mouth. Busy there. I think what it does is it basically helps wet your palate quite literally. The moment you place a bit of that rasam in your mouth, I think because of the acidity that comes from the tomatoes and the tamarind, it gets your salivary glands. It opens up everything. That's right. You place that vade in your mouth, hallo beda. You just let the vade do its thing. Slowly from within the grainy pores of the vade, the rasam oozes out. And that vade quite literally dissolves away on your tongue. That's how soft and gentle this rasa vade is. What I'm tasting in that masala definitely is the potency of some coriander. Not just the fresh coriander, but also the coriander kernels that probably go into that masala. We don't grind it very fine, you know, a little bit coarse. So the coriander, the jiri, everything, it keeps coming in layers. And then of course the uh, asafoetida. A tinge of it. You know, initially, you wonder what the fuss is about the rasa vade. It's a rasa vade at the end of the day. But then as you taste it bite after bite, it gets to a level where you find that rasa vade comforting. It's busy, the sulfur strong, the pepper is hit, you can feel the strength of the pepper. But somewhere, you want to quite quickly reach for the next scoop of the rasa vade. I think if you find yourself at Matsya, you should definitely make a beginning with the rasa vade. This is cooked in nalanna. Sesame, yeah, sesame oil. So the one difference that I find between the kuli paniyaram here and let's say something that I would taste in a Karnataka is that there's very little of what's gone in. So what you're really tasting is a texture that comes from this batter. Batter. So you basically have the crispy edges and on the inside it's soft and a little airy. There's probably a bit of coriander that goes into coriander, it. Coriander, chili. So your chutney is only coconut. Only coconut and little bit of seasoning. A little bit of the seasoning of the sasue and of the curry leaf and probably a hint of tamarind somewhere. Little bit. There's all the chutney that you can enjoy in huge yeah. portions. Huge so I'm portion. sure this chutney must be very popular. Yeah, yeah. Chutney is the most popular. <laughs> so people keep asking for replenishment. Chutney with tandoor they'll ask. <laughs> with tandoor. So that Huli Paniyaram or the Huli Appa as they call it here is a sort that's fairly gentle. There's not too much that's gone into it. There's probably flecks of coriander somewhere, some flecks of chili. Yeah. And it's also mated with a chutney that's quite gentle. But I think this is a sort of uh, snack that makes for a light impression on the palate before you settle for a main course. Is that what Exactly. So, so the Huli Appa, the Goli Bajja, they're all starters. Hmm. Yeah. But I think this rasa vada has the potential to be the hero or the heroine all by itself. That's the sort of impression it suddenly leaves on your palate. Well, this is a rasa that you don't want to waste. Pardon me. <laughs> You know, typically when I go to these reviews and I'm tasting the food, I'm doing it by myself on the table. But out here, I'm learning so much from the brothers in terms of what went into this place, the traditions that they've held on to, that I think I should probably 
encourage the company on the table whilst I finish my meal here. <laughs> so when I look around here, so I see families, I see multiple generations, I see people who are probably just finished work and have settled down for a quick bite before they go home. It's mostly families, you can see parents, grandparents, yes. children. I can see generations, generations sitting here. on a table. I, I know a lot of people who have seen me as a kid. And I know a lot of girls who are married and now bringing their children. It's a family thing. Family. What time do you open? Seven. Seven till two o'clock in the, the morning. morning. Every day. Every day. So in the mornings it's a bit quiet. Lunch, you get all these office goers. Evenings, it's, we, family. it's families. Nights, it's the monks. <laughs> So the DJs come, uh, they call me, the gig just got over, uh, I'm just coming. Uh, so if it's three something, I can't stay beyond that. Uh, I'll keep a doggy pack, free, okay, take it. <laughs> this is your chili cheese toast. This is the famous chili cheese toast. Bread with chilies and on top a layer of cheese. This chili cheese toast wasn't in my mind. But they said you have to have it because that way you will get to taste the bread that we make and the bread is quite soft. This again goes well with your coffee. So the bread is very soft. It's not like a typical chili cheese toast where the bread is grilled. No, no, we don't know. Do so what's interesting here is there probably buttered two slices of bread and the chili and the cheese only goes on the top layer. But I guess after a few bites, I'm sure the chili, that green chili, certainly gets to you. It doesn't seem heavy in the least, so you don't have that feeling of guilt that you've eaten the rasavada, that you've eaten the gulliappa, and now you're devouring that cheese toast before waiting for that nei roast, that ghee dosa. This is a regular dosa, huh. like your plain dosa, and this is your ghee roast. So the ghee roast has a bit of a shine on shine it. Shine on it. Huh. That's because the ghee on top, little bit light. So one of our viewers, Mr. Gautam Khariwal, spotted me at the restaurant and what are you telling me? If you are in Chennai and Matsya are coming, don't miss Italy with Malaga Puri. मलगा पुड़ी मंगाइए, इसमें घी डालिए और एक निवाला इटली को लीजिए, घी में और मलगा पुड़ी में लीजिए, फिर उसको मुंह में डालिए, फील कीजिए, इटली लाज जवाब। Fantastic. So I think probably after this नई रोस, I should probably try that. Thank you very much. So I guess when a place has been around for the last 70 years, you will have people. Who over a period of time have made certain dishes their own. And I'm sure this ghee roast dosa too has many takers. I can certainly feel the burden of the nehi in this. There's a bit of sourness in that dosa. Bandha. The, the, that's the dosa bandha. That's our taste. Again, we don't want to ape somebody else, you know. Mm. So this is how we are and people like it. How long do you eight hours, eight, eight hours. hours. It's a constant process. So the night they will do for the morning, morning they will do for the evening, evening they will do for the late night. That cycle will keep going on. This is a dosa that has a lot of ghee. You said this is a light dosa but you can certainly taste. No, no, maybe for Kripalana they have little more love they would have put. The fingers do all the talking. <laughs> it's a light dosa but there is plenty of tuppa. After all it's a tuppa dosa. Tuppa dosa. Huh? So we don't put oil in it. When you roast the dosa? Nothing. It's all in ghee. All in ghee. Ah. And we add the ghee slightly at the later part. If you see Bangalore, yeah. they put the dosa and they'll squeeze the <laughs> thing. We wait for it to have a slight thing. Then just when it's above, we put the ghee and take it off. People have a second dosa. I mean, ah. you add a lot of stuff. But they will say ghee roast and they'll say repeat. Yeah. So, which is not possible in the other forms. If it's very heavy, you know, you cannot have it. What I love about this dosa 
is a crispy crackle. This dosa almost feels like a wafer in a manner of speaking. Yeah. Right? We have another thing which is thinner than this, huh. which is called the pepper roast. Mm. So this is a kotte kadbu. What is the difference in the hittu for a mude and a idli? So the idli is a little more nicer. Hmm. This is a little more coarser. So will there be more uddu in this as compared to the idli? No, but we, we don't, the grinding time is very vital. So it's a little more coarser and the accompanying is different. We give meneskai, we give kotu, we give the chutney also. So this is almost like a saru. Thicker version. Thicker version. So I think the way to eat this is to probably break that. Mash it into it, mix it and have it. And then savor it. In this I'm tasting a bit of the sweetness that comes from jaggery. I can also taste the flavor of the bele. The togri bele in that. This is a little thicker. Yeah. And this is like a meal. So this also has uh, sautakai. Sautakai, sometimes we use chow chow, mm. sometimes we use uh, white pumpkin. Every day it keeps changing. So if you don't want to do the typical idli, which I'm told they're very popular for as well, like the gentleman said, the idli with the puri and Chili the... powder and ghee. We have a malaga puri which we make, which is a combination of a lot of spices. Mm. And this is your meneskai. During summer, we give it with mango. Now, it is with pineapple. Is it going to be a little sweet and sour? Exactly, sweeter. So, it's almost like a, a goju. Yeah, you, you know, can like call the, it a goju. The real finds to me on this table today are things like the rasavade, the kotege with the meneskai. And this, what do you call it? We call it a kutu here. This is delicious too. Come on. I love that sweet acidity of that pineapple. So sweetness is jaggery. Jaggery. As you can see, I'm quite enjoying this mood with the menace and also that kutu. That pineapple is simply delicious. I think that kutu and that mensukai makes for the perfect combination. Perfect combination. Yeah. You want something which is light yet a little more filling. Filling. Little, yeah. A filling not just in terms of the quantity, but filling also in terms of the fullness of flavors as opposed to let's say something a little more gentler like that chutney or that breakfast sambar. No points for guessing which dishes I enjoyed the most. So this is your... Uh, Semiya Chitrana. Semiya Chitrana. So this is again a dinner item or... No, this is, comes in the Udupi platter. There's a tamarind. Exactly. Little bit of jaggery is there in this. The tamarind and the jaggery. jaggery. That's where the Udupi influence comes through. Chavige Chitranna. Mm. So in a Karnataka Chitranna, there is mostly the raw mango, or in some places they also use a citron lime. Whereas here, the souring agent is tamarind. Tamarind. And the jaggery that acts as a counterpoint. What I also like is a soft bite of the peanut. So it's got some good texture. The chili is biargi in this. Yeah, you this the is color. Color. It's not so much of the heat. Exactly. Mm. It's not too spicy on the system. I thought I just have like one morsel of it, but it is quite tasty. And it's a very light thing. So mm. after all this, you'd still feel light. It's not very heavy. I think your meal here must be nice. The Udupi platter comes with all this. The goli bhaja, the guliappa. We give buns. Then we have a little bit of bismillah anna. We give curd rice. Then neer dosa with jaggery. Bella kai. Bella kai. Kai bella. So when you get here, Apart from the dishes that I ordered, also ask for the Udupi platter. Udupi platter, but it's available only for lunch. We try to make it very authentic. Huh. See, there are a lot of restaurants who hail from South Canada, huh. but nobody gives you Udupi cuisine. Hmm. We give the whole lot. This is the Basundi. The Basundi. 
Well, after tasting all that, we tasted right from the rasam vade, kadbo, ghee roast dosa, kuli uh, paniyaram, senge chitrana. We arrive at the basundi. I think it's finally time to close things, to wind things down here at Matsya with some basundi. So this is very popular too. Very popular. I think what's nice about the basundi is that it's very cooling. It's a perfect balm to a warm Chennai evening. It's creamy. It's soothing. But it's not too sweet. It's quite refreshing as it goes down your throat. There's a bit of texture that you taste in the pistachio and the almonds, and then the gentle lingering whiff of the saffron. I don't think I've ever seen an eatery as packed as this. Every single chair is taken, barring the table that we are, we occupying. are occupying. And I'm sure there is a tremendous pressure even for these precious chairs. But people are waiting out there. Once they finish waiting, they are allowed inside to another waiting area, and they sit there patiently for their turn at the table. And people don't mind waiting. They don't mind. Good food, so they wait. I so, guess at the end of the day, when people are happy with what they eat, the effort getting there doesn't count. A lot of people can do a lot of jobs. You can be an IT professional, you can be an accountant, but the most happiness is when you give food and the client is happy. There's no other satisfaction which is bigger than that. A happy customer is the ultimate high. Fantastic. So I think on that note, it's time to close this video right here. So if you find yourself in Chennai, I want to savor a tradition that goes back 70 years. Yeah. When the forefathers of the brothers here moved from Udupi to Madras, Madras Presidency, Presidency, well, definitely find your way to Matsya. I've enjoyed almost everything that I tasted. The next time I'm here, I'm definitely going to try and see if I can make it for lunch and taste that Udupi platter. Some of the components that I tasted from there, including that Chitranna Shavige and also the Kadubu with the Meniskai are the sort that will happily have me visit Matsya once again. I hope you enjoyed this short and sweet Tiffin episode here with the brothers at Matsya. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating. Well, it's about 9.10 and typically I don't do coffee this late because I know it's going to keep me up. But I'm told one of the things that you have to do when you get to Matsya is not leave without a kappa, without your coffee. Certainly the sort that wakes you up. Pure coffee. Pure coffee. You'll have a little bit of bitterness. Coffee is meant to be bitter and strong. So in a chicory coffee, you'll also taste some caramel notes. Here there is no caramel Not. note. And in a chicory coffee, there's some aftertaste. This only the coffee will linger in your lips. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!